Hello, I'm B.D. Brenneman, and I'm doing my leadership presentation on my own personal hero, P.T. Barnum. P.T. Barnum is incredibly well known for a, a wide range of uh, what could be called strange behavior, but he's actually one of the most brilliant businessmen in history, and he's quite possibly the pioneer of modern propaganda <laughs> advertising. He's really well known for uh, his showmanship and... Mostly, when you think of him, the first thing that pops into your head is the circus. But he didn't actually start with that until he was 61 years old. Prior to that, he actually spent most of his life working in a wide range of other things. His very first effort when he moved to New York was uh, actually a museum that he purchased, added his name to it, and then just started expanding it. The museum wound up being the centerpiece for most of his efforts throughout his life. It was actually the location of the first aquarium in America, which he himself built. He is also extremely well known for uh, his scams and his frauds. <laughs> but uh, the thing that really brought it all together was actually his museum. He, while he was constantly accused of uh, faulty advertising, he himself had a, held a huge campaign to prevent faulty advertising. He would advertise anything as anything, and he could he had the amazing ability to sell anything to anyone. But his big specific thing was that no matter what he advertised, he absolutely made certain that his customers always got their money was worth. He was adamant about it, and he wouldn't put up with anyone else who used faulty advertising. And everything that he learned through the process of his long life is what led to his success in the circus. All of his experience, all of his ideas, his creativity, he took all of that in there. But despite the fact that he's most well known for creating the Three Ring Circus, he actually spent a lot of time as a political activist. He was on the forefront of the political scene at the very beginning of the Civil War and he was an absolute diehard fan of liberation for slaves. He was a firm believer in equality for all human beings, and he was one of the first members of a brand new par political party called the Republicans, who were founded on the premise of freeing the slaves. And he was an extremely active member in the Republican Party at its beginning, and extremely active with campaigning and using his incredible skills of publicity for spreading the word about abolition. And when the 13th Amendment was ratified, he was right at the forefront advertising it and making sure everyone knew about it and trying to do everything he possibly could to support it. He got involved in politics and gave lectures uh, in Congress about how all men were created equal. And when the Civil War broke out, he was one of the most die-hard fans of the North. He, wa he did everything he possibly could to improve morale and increase public support for the Northern armies, and he was a huge fan of it. it was so, he was so, so much of an advocate that a Confederate spy once actually tried to torch his museum, and... That wound up starting a long series of events where throughout his entire life he was constantly plagued by fires. A uh, number of things that burned were, uh, he had a very large expensive mansion that he had built in the uh, north. And it was called, he actually called it Iranistan. And it was only there for nine years before it burned completely to the ground. And... <laughs> His museum itself burned down twice before he gave up on it. When he started his circus, the circus was constantly plagued by fires, but no matter how many times things burned down, he always found a way of putting things back together and just, he always kept on going and he never gave up. Even when, uh, <coughs> even when absolute disaster hit the economy, and they called it the Panic of 1837. It was a horrible economic crash that led to an early depression, and he lost almost everything. He'd invested most of his assets in a, trying to relocate a clock factory to his own town to bring jobs to his people, and it wound up going under with everything else in the economic crash, and he lost everything. But instead of giving up, he went on tour, 
After losing everything, the man rounded up all of his friends and everyone who owed him a favor and hit the road. He wound up traveling all around the world just doing what he did and he made back all his money. He wound up going on lecture tours and book signing tours and <laughs> he, within four years, he'd completely recovered his wealth. And his book that he wrote about himself, <laughs> which was a major source of information for this, wound up selling so many copies that at that time the only book that sold more copies was the New Testament of the Bible. <laughs> he actually came in second to the Bible, which was an astounding feat during that era. <laughs> and no matter what happened though, <clears throat> he never gave up. He was an absolute showman and he was the absolute epitome of everything that this particular class has taught us about how to run a business, how to deal with people. It was He was such a businessman that even on his dying bed, his last words when right before he died, he asked what the take at the box office had been that day. <laughs> and then he smiled and he died contented. Right up to the end, the man was an absolute businessman and it's all he really, really wanted to do. He's actually famous for a quote that the noblest art is that of making others happy. He was this incredible businessman who always made sure that his business was working with other people. He understood that people are the essence of business. Your customers are the center of everything. And quite frankly, it's my honest hope that I can end up doing just as well as he did because I seriously doubt we'll ever see another man who had such an astounding talent for understanding people and human nature. Thank you.